Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and that's the second episode of the fashion news and today we've got plenty, plenty of news to talk about but before we jump straight to the video don't forget to like it, subscribe to my channel anyways you can unsubscribe later if you feel like it, I do really hope you don't. We'll start with a review of some fashion shows from Milan Fashion Week that were not included in the previous video. I don't mean to set the negative tone to this video, but I kind of feel like talking about ugly clothes at the moment. Philip Lane's latest fashion show was a straight up mess. Accompanied by the ludicrous video, it showed us plentiful of tie dyes, as if that's what we need in 2021. We need to gather around the campfire and sing Soul Sister. Also, that's a bit too much of a rainbow for a person who's been facing multiple homophobic accusations lately. Another highly criticized collection from the Milan Fashion Week was Dolce & Gabbana, usual. They were trying to have a play on futurism with metallic textures and uh, space silhouettes. They even borrowed humanoid robots from Italian Institute of Technology. And what for? It genuinely looked like as if my grandma now would decide to become famous on TikTok and try to catch up on modern trends. Do you even guys remember how in 2013 literally every single Tumblr girl was wearing holographic everything? Although these two collections were utterly terrible, we got some memes out of that. And let's move on to something more aesthetically pleasing. The latest Versace collection was quite different from the usual in-your-face Italian kitsch. It included monochromatic looks, it showcased slim silhouettes, sharp tailoring and sultry reefs on power dresses. The runway was a separate piece of art. Models were making their way through the Versace maze. The looks felt strong, powerful and bold, but alongside with this, wearable. I definitely can see a lot of these looks on the red carpets in the nearest future. LM6 Maison Margiela gave a short but clear comment about our current unpredictable reality. The fashion show featured inside-out camisoles, pants with their pockets out, yet everything in the best tradition of the fashion house. Another collection that received a great praise from the fashion audience is the one by Salvatore Ferragamo. The objective was to engineer a collection through a prism of the future, says Paul Andrew. The collection featured simple monochromatic looks of reinvented staples. The Ferragamo is all about the strong tailoring resembling military uniforms. Also, Andrew mentioned that up and recycling became a major part of his designing process. The last but not the least fashion show from the Milan Fashion Week that I wanted to mention is Valentino. And as much as I love making fun of the marketing strategy for Valentino, particularly just hopping on a train of hype without um, understanding that the train has already left long, long time ago, they suddenly became very relevant after the last Haute Couture collection. Fashion House Creatives showed a stunning collection of muted color palette with the splashes of bright colors. Prepper looks consisted of the pleated A-line, mini skirts, pointed collar, white shirts, turtlenecks, swingy cape coats and boots covered in signature studs. And let's move on to Paris Fashion Week. And surprisingly, I think the biggest recognition received Rick Owens and his women's, women's wear line. And I don't think that anybody, even the fans of Rick Owens, expected his women's line to be better than his men's wear, because that's what he's known for. But here we are. Dark biblical collection named after Gethsemane the garden where Jesus spent his last night before crucifixion, showcased modern deconstruction. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, rending one's clothing is a physical expression of mourning and grief, and a number of the models wore black denim slashed to within an inch of its life. 
Tailor jackets from which the sleeves were ripped off and replaced with jumbo duvet snap-ons also featured prominently as did skin-light leather bodysuits and power shoulders meant to parody male aggression. Every single look came with a mask featuring a stylus scarf-like panel and I literally think that Rick is the only designer that still remembers that we are kind of in pandemic and uh, we have to wear masks. I have shown masks with these pandemic shows not because my masks are guaranteed protection but because they are a vote for responsibility and consideration and an acknowledgement of our immediate collective experience. Thank you Rick, we all very much appreciate it. Dries van Norton's full collection shown in artful moody images runs the full gamut of human emotion from happiness to rage, confusion, logic and euphoria how the brand explains. The heightened, dramatic, exaggerated, discreet and timid all synchronize. There is a lot of emotion in these images and in these clothes. For example, a long white shirt dress is an updated take on one from Tris van Norton's first collection released in 1981 as a fashion student, black short suiting and vibrant color blocked gowns all come together in a very specific Dries way. Another designer as always true to his identity is Thibi Magugu. He continued the exploration of his South African heritage through the theme of African spirituality, which was reflected in sharp tailored suits and mod inspired dresses with the bright prints of the symbols exploited by mystics. The way he takes vibrant motifs of his South African heritage and places them on Eurocentric silhouettes continue to develop with every season. His recognizable and unique aesthetic leaves literally no doubts why he is the finalist of this year's Wumok Prize. Another great collection from Paris Fashion Week is the one from Marine Serre and why I love this brand particularly is because of her eco-futurism. She is always showing her pursuit of sustainable fashion on offer were her signatures midi dress made of repurposed silk scarf, multi pocket jackets made of dead stock materials and her iconic crest moon bodysuits. And as much as it is great to have sustainable brand, it, is, it might be very difficult to upcycle and recycle textiles without them just look like upcycled and recycled textiles. But I think Maureen is doing that in a very um, eloquent and elegant way that they still look expensive, even though they are repurposed. And film events. Film events always give us a lot of interesting looks of celebrities to discuss and this year's Golden Globe was not an exception. The most talked about looks of this uh, event include Cynthia Erivo in stunning Valentino Couture as well as Daniel Levi, Tiffany Haddish ready to conquer medieval England in Obata Frati, Sarah Paulson in the elegant Prada gown, Rosemond Pike's iconic moment in Molly Goddard's dress. Also, I don't know who could have worn this Miu Miu dress better than Emma Corrin. We have Josh O'Connor wearing Louis Anna Taylor Jor and Juliana in custom duo. Whereas some of the most disappointing looks include Lily Collins in Yves Saint Laurent. And I feel like after Emily in Paris, she literally should have fired her stylists. I guess there are some lessons that um, we never learn. Also Margot Robbie looking like she's gone out for groceries in the Whole Foods in 2010 LA. And Margot unfortunately was not the only victim of Chanel that evening. Andra Day also had her fashion moment ruined. Angela Bassett and this random Dolce & Gabbana overdose. Laura Dern in badly fitted Givenchy and Julia in Prada apparently go into the same grocery with Margot, as well as Salma Hayek in McQueen's and Nicola Coughlin in Molly Goddard. Last two dresses are not completely terrible, they just don't, they just don't look on 
on them. And finally, my favorite fashion tee of the week, Anne Hubbard, who worked for Nike for more than 25 years, recently on the positions as vice president and general manager of North America operations, resigned from her position because allegedly her son is dumb. The kid was buying limited sneakers and reselling them for insane profits using his mom's credit card. Some of his purchases were reaching over $100,000. On top of that, he was using bots to buy sneakers, which you know is not completely legal. And I just have so many questions here. First of all, how come that you do not notice that from your credit card disappeared like hundred thousand dollars and secondly that they go to Nike store and thirdly would you really think that your kid is just a little sneaker hat when your backyard looks like that and you and you know I cannot imagine what it feels like to be on a position that high because your name is searchable so when they when your next employer decides to check on you that's the first thing that's gonna come up that you resigned from Nike after such scandal but I guess if you don't notice hundred thousand dollars disappearing from your bank account you're not gonna be too worried about getting fired and the last one for today OTP a parent company for Maison Mangela, Victor and Grove, Money and Diesel acquires Jill Sander from Japanese company Onward Holding. What does it mean for the brand? I have no idea because I don't think that Jill Sander has anything to do with the brand anymore and it's been just moving from one owner to another. So I guess we'll see whether it affects the brand in any way in the nearest future. I guess that's it for today. Let me know what was your favorite fashion moment of the week down below and see you already next week.